I am taking it there. Yes. It is time for me to explode. It is time for me to let loose in this mother. That's right. It is time for me to show my true colors. It is time for me to go all the way to the end, to hit the finish line, to get the gold medal. Fuck that, I'm turning that shit into platinum. That's right. I'm going to turn gold into platinum, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Look at that shit over there. Now, gold to platinum. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I am talking about. We're going to examine a lot of different things in this vlog. Not only is this going to be just a simple geek log, vlog, a log, P log it's also going to we're going to talk about things that are political we're going to talk about things that are historical we're going to talk about things that are truthful all the fools we're going to do all the fools all the fools because there's a lot of fools out there that are thinking about different fools that are not true now first of all there are a lot of factors in life where we are taught certain things all over life, and we believe it's true. Some of us have broken away from those traditions of our family and started to dive into other factions. Like some of us was grown up as Christians and then change to being Wiccan. You know, uh, they're, I mean, and, and because they're going against what they were taught. But they didn't do it on purpose. They just feel that Wiccan is their best way of life. Why stick to the old? Why? Why stick to what your parents know? without you doing any investigation whatsoever, without you studying, without you doing any research, you accept the way of life. And you accept what you were taught without asking questions. Back when I was a Jehovah Witness, I was brought up in a Jehovah Witness uh, family. I was taught certain things. But Brother Garoba, who was my mentor, who was also the uh, one of the brothers of the organization at a Kingdom Hall and on Allen Avenue in Pasadena, California. And anybody who attends that particular Kingdom Hall, well, I don't think you're listening to this vlog. <laughs> ah. But in case you are, you know the kingdom I'm talking about if you live in Pasadena, California. At the time, it was brand new, back in 1980. Late 70s, early 80s is when I attended there. And every time something was brought up, I always questioned it. And one of the main questions I've had with the brothers there, any, anybody who sat and sat with me and taught me, and the main one was Brother Garova, I asked him this question. I said, Brother Garova, sir, what happened? What happened when Adam and Eve had his children, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, right? We all know this story. Cain killed Abel. I mean, we all know this. It was the first murder in history, according to the Bible. Now, this, these were the first humans on earth, according to the Bible. God created the heavens and earth. Within six days, on the sixth day, he rested. And then he was like, okay, now I'm going to create some humans in the likeness of me. 
All right, so we understand that, you know, we don't look just like God. We don't look just like Jehovah. But likeness is the personality of him. But he restricted our knowledge. He restricted our likeness or, or our awareness of being so-called naked. If that's the case, then why are so many Africans in Africa in so-called what used to be Eden running around naked? Nick, uh, nakedness is not a big thing in Africa. It's like, so what? A woman is running around with her boobs hanging out. It's not a big thing. In fact, think about it. It makes really, I mean, okay, put aside what you know. Open your mind and think about how a woman walking around with her titties hanging out is not a big deal. So what? Africans there saw best all day. It was like, oh, whatever. And you saw women best breastfeeding. So, okay. It's just a woman just had a baby. All right. It's meant to best be best breast. Yeah. I can even talk. Breast fed. Then, of course, some snake who was a puppet of Satan the devil, Lucifer, right? We all know this story. Made the snake talk to Eve and said, hmm, how would you like this so-called apple tree? Okay, now, we all know that we don't know the exact fruit of this particular tree. You know, it could have been an orange tree or, you know, pears, who knows? We don't know the exact fruit, but the fruit. It's like, hey, you know, God told you not to eat this, but it's okay. You can have it anyway. And, okay, I understand humans being curious. We're, we're, we were built with that type of mindset to be curious about what is not or what is pro the possibilities, which is the best descriptions of what Starfleet is all about in Star Trek. We're curious, so we're going to go out further. We're going to see what's out there. We want to uh, uh, discover new life and new civilization and go where no one, no man or no one, depending on what generation Star Trek you watch, where no man or no one has gone before. According to Cochrane, um, that's what he said. And that was from the, uh, the Enterprise show, when Cochran uh, mentioned that particular statement. Go where no one has gone before. So, here's what you got to think about, is that Eve partake of this wonderful fruit. She ate it. God got mad because Adam ate it too. And then human civilization blames women for our sin. Several thousands of years later, a man comes down to earth and claims that he is the son of God. A lot of people are like, are you freaking kidding me? None of those other people believe in that stuff, except for Jewish people. Really? And then people were following this dude who they didn't have any proof that he was the son of God. They just believed this man running around talking like he was crazy. I mean, think about this. Think, I mean, just think about it. Okay? Really think about this. And then people believe that Jesus is white. He was in the Middle East. How in the hell is he white? He's probably the same color as Saddam Hussein. Same color as Osama bin Laden. Probably darker, probably lighter, but he definitely wasn't white. And then it describes his ass in the Bible, holy hair and all that stuff. Okay, we can talk about that all day, because then we can go into the fact that the Bible was translated. So we don't know what type of hair he had, because it could have been translated wrong.
I don't know ancient Hebrew. Do you? I don't know ancient Latin, ancient Arabic. So does anybody know what the Bible really says? It's best interpretation. Is that right? Oh, then you can say, well, the Word of God helps the translators. No. Do we have any proof of this? Is there any proof? Or do we just go on faith all by itself? And that's what a lot of Christians are saying these days. Okay. We're now coming up with theories about our life here on Earth, about our surrounding universe that surrounds us. And it's all theories. None of it's proven. We haven't been out there yet. We don't know what's really out there. Because every time we look in space, we see what happened in the past. Because it takes that long for light to get to us. So we really don't know what's out there. Because all those stars we see out there, half of them are probably gone by now. But let's go back some more. I mean, let's go back. I want to take you back to Cain and Abel. Because I think that's where I started and just started rambling about something else. Cain and Abel. Cain got jealous of Abel because he was offering something to God that was more special. Now, is God that much in vain that he needs something more special? If I came up to God and gave him a feather, he'll be just as happy, or should be. And, and let's say that my brother who brought a damn goat. But then I think it, Cain did bring something more, but God favored Abel because Abel had more faith. Is that not how the Bible goes? Okay. Uh, I don't remember exactly what Cain and Abel came up with, but I'm about to get something to eat right now. I'm going to continue this conversation.